Right, so in this one we're looking at uh, first order differential equations and we're going to try and solve them using uh, something called integrating factors. So we've already looked at solving first order differential equations before and we've seen that we can solve them if they're exact. Um, so this is a technique we can use for when the equations are not exact. So let me give you an example. Right, so this differential equation is not exact uh, because although the, the y differentiates to be dy by dx, um, there's nothing here which differentiates to give 3. Um, so this technique we can use to uh, make this into an exact differential equation. And the way it works is by calculating something called the integrating factor, which is written as ix. Um, ix is always equal to uh, the exponential e and then it's the integral of whatever function is in front of the y. So in this case it's a plus 3, so we put the plus 3 in there, obviously you don't need the plus sign. What if it was a minus though? And then we integrate that 3, it's in front of the y there. So the integral of 3 we know is going to be uh, 3x and the e just stays there, so we're sort of integrating this top bit and sort of ignoring the e for a second. And this here, e to the 3x, this is the integrating factor for this particular first order differential equation. What we do is we times the, ho times the whole equation by e to the 3x. So e to the 3x times by dy by dx, and then e to the 3x times in there, shoving it out of the 3. And then here, e to the minus x times by e to the 3x, you add the powers so it becomes e to the 2x. Okay. Now what's good about this is the fact that we actually turn this side into being an exact differential. Uh, can you see the y here differentiates to give dy by dx. And this uh, e to the 3x here differentiates to give, well, e to the 3x and times by the differential here 3. And that means this side is actually the differential of the two things in circles, the integrating factor, e to the 3x, and the y. In fact, this will always be the case. When you times this side by the integrating factor, you can always write it as the integrating factor times by y. So we'll see that again and again, point that out each time it happens. Uh, this side here, well, it just stays the same, because I don't even think I've just rewrote this bit here. We can now integrate this fairly easily, because this side here we can integrate, just becomes integrating factor times by y. And this side here we need to integrate as well, so the integral of this side. Now when we integrate uh, e to the 2x, that's easy done, we integrate it, we um, just need to divide by the 2, add the c on, and that is the solution to our um, first order differential equation. In fact we should probably write it so it's y equals, that's how it's because we're done, so we divide by e to the 3x or times by e to the minus 3x, it's the same thing. So if we times by e to the minus 3x, we'd get this. We get a weird um, c times by e to the minus 3x as well. So c is an unknown number, we've got an unknown coefficient in front of this here. But that is the solution to this uh, particular first order differential equation. Okay, well, let's have a look at another example, see if we can. Uh, see the patterns emerging here. So here's another one. Very similar. Okay, so this time, um, this function here is a minus two. So to work out the integrating factor, we're doing e, the integral of that minus two dx. If we integrate minus two, we get minus two x. So this is very similar to the last one. We now times the whole thing by the integrating factor. And uh, e to the 5x times e to the minus 2x is e to the 3x. We'll just point this out again. Here the y differentiates to be the dy by dx. And here the minus, so the e to the minus 2x differentiates to give the minus 2 e to the minus 2x. It's important that you put the minus sign in here, you see. <coughs> Sorry. 
Otherwise, when you differentiate it, you don't get an exact differential. The sign has to be correct, which would be an exact differential. So this could be rewritten as two things in circles, the integrating factor uh, times by the y. This happens all the time, so actually sometimes in the future we might actually just miss some of these steps because we know what's going to happen. Um, but we'll do all the steps today just so we can see what's going on. And then we can integrate, so we get e to the minus 2x times by y is equal to the integral of e to the 3x dx, and the integral of that will be e to the 3x times by a third plus c. Again, to get the y by itself, to complete the solution, we can just times by e to the 2x or divide by e to the minus 2x, the same thing. We'll times by e to the 2x to get rid of this. So we get e to the uh, 5x here plus c e to the 2x. Okay. And there's your solution to that one. Okay, those two are very similar though. So let's have a look at um, one more that's a little bit different just so we can see that these things aren't always the same. Okay, so this is harder, mainly because um, you'll need to know a bit of the integration of some, some trigonometric functions like tan and cos. Um, and if you're not familiar with those, then it will look harder than it actually is. Um, these things you'll come across in C3 and C4. So if you haven't yet seen them, um, don't worry. I'll point out when you should worry if you don't understand, I suppose. Here we go. So we start off again by doing the integrating factor. This time, it's not a minus 2 or a plus 3. It's a tan x plus tan x, if you like. So integrating tan x dx. And that's the, the point there. Can you integrate tan? Do you need integral of tan? Is? It's not hard. You just look it up in a textbook. Um, or a former booklet, and you get told that the integral of tan is actually ln sec x. So sec x is 1 over cos x. Now the reason that's commonly used in this is because the e and the ln here are what is known as inverse functions. So this e and this ln actually cancel each other out. So this becomes actually just a sec x. That's why they like using things like tan x um, and other things like... Um, in fact, sec x itself and cot x will also give you things with a ln in front, uh, and the ln then cancels with the e to give you quite a nice formula. Now, sec x, just in case you're not familiar, is 1 over cos x. You learn about that in C3. So that's our integrating factor sec x. We times the whole equation by sec x. So now we get sec x dy dx. We get sec x times uh, tan x. So we get uh, sec x tan x squeeze that in there and we get sec x times cos x but because sec x is 1 over cos x we're actually doing 1 over cos x times by cos x which is actually 1. I'm doing that there just to save me some space because we're going to run out of space otherwise. Uh, we now rewrite this side. Um, we don't know perhaps this yet but y differentiates to be dy dx and sec x differentiates to be sec x tan x. But what we should know is that we always end up getting the same thing here. We always end up with the integrating factor times by y. Here we had the integrating factor, uh, sorry, my e to the minus 2x times by y. Here we had the integrating factor times by y. And here we have the integrating factor times by y. And this side here we have whatever's left over. Uh, we integrate this side. And we integrate this side. The integral of y of course is x. And then we can get rid of the sec x, we can divide by sec x, or we could times by cos x. I'm going to times by cos x. And that's your solution. Obviously there's quite a lot to learn. Uh, there'll be a second video on the same topic, uh, integrating factors, just because there's quite a few more tricky ones. Um, have a go. See how you get on. Good luck.